Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zafia. That, of course, is Kyle Yates, and it's you. And today, we've got a great guest from across the pond. He's actually joining us on his wedding anniversary, which I got to tell you, he is already in the doghouse, so he might as well just hang out with us here and try to get the dogs out for this waiver wire. He's the one, the only Five Yard Rush Podcast host, Lord Adam Murphit otherwise known as Murph. Murph, welcome back to the show, buddy. You were a huge hit last time, and I'm so excited to have you back on again. It's an absolute pleasure to be back. I I really appreciate it, although people who perhaps didn't enjoy my appearance last time might be thinking I'm a bit like Kendall Roy trying to take over the rest of the fantasy industry by continually coming back. But I can assure you, Alain, just like it did for Kendall Roy, I'll end up in some sort of an apartment in the arms of a blonde woman with no friends crying my eyes out. (laughs) Oh, that's a lot to take in at the top. I love you. I, I especially, know. especially if it's like this waiver wire week. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And, it's only uh, going to end in tears, anyways. It, it pretty much is. But you know what? We we've got lots of holes to fill here. Uh, but before we even uh, get into the names of the guys and the other stuff going on here in the show, Yates, I just want to check on you and uh, see how your legs were after all those victory laps on Joe Mixon yesterday. Are they tired? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Hey, I'm. Uh, I got a good workout in yesterday. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, no, man. I'm doing. I'm doing good. Awesome. All right, and uh, we're gonna talk about uh, some of these big time running backs who are now out again. If you can believe it, I don't know why we can't have nice things in fantasy football, but for some reason, that's been the story of 2021 and kind of the story of 2020. It was another weird week uh in in week 12 uh, i think every four weeks we're kind of due for one of these i feel like every month we get one of these weeks where we look at each other and go how did that happen well, well this is what we're at and this is why we're here so in week 13 we're going to go through the waiver wire pickups before we do i want to remind everybody about the contest we got going on at fantasypros.com slash contest all you have to do is subscribe to our youtube channel which is glorious we have amazing content there every single podcast every single yates victory lap Every single short form live stream, you name it, we've got it here. You can interact with us over on the YouTube channel, but you can't unless you subscribe. So subscribe today at youtube.com slash fantasy pros and then head over to fantasypros.com slash contest where you can win. Thanks to our friends at Pristine Auction, a Chris Godwin autographed jersey. There's only a few days Ooh. left here in November to do that. I know Murph, you're probably going to uh, somehow get into this contest because you are a Bucks fan. So, uh, yeah, we're I'm going to have to put to an American address somewhere because you're not allowed to apply <laughs> in the UK. I don't think I haven't tried already, by the way, but that's a sweet prize. It, it look, you don't have to. You don't have to be living in America. We have lots. <laughs> we got people from Germany. We got Ecuador. We got all kinds of fans from different places. So it, we're international, baby. We're fancy pros. So you, if you win this, I'll tell you what. They could ship it to me. I'll ship it to you. All right. Nice. If you end up winning, so yes. done deal. But again, you got to go to fantasypros.com slash contest to follow all the rules to do it and subscribe to the YouTube channel at Fantasy Pros. Don't forget to click that notifications bell too while you're at it because every time you do, you know when the new content drops here and get you ready for your playoff push, which is where we're at. And also this show in particular is of course covered by our waiver assistant, but at my playbook, we also offer those cheat sheets that are free. So only premium subscribers can use the waiver assistant. Our cheat sheets, however, are for everybody. Just sync up your league today for free and get instant waiver wire and lineup advice for free. Combining your favorite experts like Yates, Murph, myself, whoever it is, and all of that is customizable for you for your league. It shows you all those rankings so you can go and make the good adjustments and good ad drops in your league. And again, that's over at my playbook at fantasypros.com slash my playbook. So before we get into the nitty gritty here, we got some more depressing news. So I want to start with a little bit of the depressing news. Yates, Christian McCaffrey back on the IR, which uh, is now going to be uh, redeemed the CMC. I think from now on, we're going to mm. call it the CMC going forward. What do we do now? So now we go back to Chuba Hubbard, mm-hmm. all of those big shares of CMC that people were so happy they just got back. Now they're gone again. This is two years in a row. Let's start with filling the void left by Christian McCaffrey, and then let's look ahead because you're Mr. Dynasty. I want to talk about his long-term value. So give me both of those angles, Yates. 
Yeah, there's definitely multiple angles that we can talk about this. We can talk about what it does for redraft next year for Christian McCaffrey and the dynasty and everything like that. But we got to focus in on the here and now. And obviously, Chuba Hubbard, if he is available in your league, he jumps to the top of the mm. list here as far as waiver wire pickups. You know, if he was dropped after Christian McCaffrey came back and he wasn't getting enough work, then people might have had to move on, especially in shallower leagues. So if Chuba Hubbard is available in your league, yes, you should be picking him up because you now have... The starting running back for the Carolina Panthers, and granted, I don't know what exact value that has with the way that this offense looks right now, but he is going to be a starting running back for the remainder of the year. Chris McCaffrey is done. So this is a major, major bummer for people who spent that number one overall pick on CMC. I mean, for going into the year, we were all saying like, last year we got to throw it out because he had been healthy up to that entire point uh he only played in three games last year only going to play in seven games this year and there is a greater conversation about what we do with cmc from a dynasty perspective and from redraft next year i think if you're talking about dynasty specifically then uh, you got to downgrade him you, you can no longer view him as this top five locked in running back uh, and it's kind of the same thing as saquon barkley right barkley had been locked in when he came out in his rookie year and especially after his performance it was all right we he's the dynasty 101 unquestioned and then now he's borderline top five you know there are several players that we can put in that conversation over saquon barkley i think that we have to have that conversation now with cmc that he is no longer a you know no longer the 101 he wasn't <clears throat> even after his first stint on the ir this year now for sure he's outside the top five mm. yates let's say that you are in a dynasty league that just started up two years ago when you took cmc 1-1 overall let's say it's a 16 team deep dynasty league let's also say your name is joe pizapia and you have cmc <laughs> uh let's say all these things are true and you just want out now what do you think is a good value to try to get out of the cmc business maybe somebody else looking to rebuild what sort of combination of player and draft picks do you think is reasonable value that everybody wins in that kind of deal i really i get asked these questions all the time about players who are currently injured and you just you're just done with them you want hands off like what do you do with them and i always advise don't sell now because right now your value is at the absolute low point for cmc and I think that this is going to be one of the situations that you just kind of have to hold on to him throughout the entire rest of the offseason, unless you are going into it, acknowledging that, you know what, I'm going to take the absolute low point and I'm just going to get what I can get. And that's going to be dependent upon league, you know, format, league size, everything, what will what the risk a, another manager is willing to take on. Right. That's going to be dependent. So I think for right now the way that I have to give advice is you hold on to him. I've got CMC in a couple of spots in <laughs> dynasty leagues. I'm not selling him because right now I think you're going to get, I mean, a top 20 borderline running back right now, and maybe a wide receiver because people are seeing the same thing that we are. They you're just not getting a ton of value right now for him. Yeah. Well, unfortunately I, I have the same inclination. I figured I would just have to wait till the off season and everything in the off season becomes new again and everything is okay. And everything is all projectability, but that is good advice. I'm glad you're reiterating, but I really want to get out of it now. Uh, all right, just, let's on, go. just on Chuba Hubbard really quickly as yeah, well. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. I, I was going to give you really, yeah. I'd be really tempted to not pick him up off the waiver wire this year. Like, I know I know what the saying is, you know, he's the RB1, but actually he's on bye this week, so he mm -hmm. gets the Falcons. If you're desperate in week 14, you're in a must win, then yeah, all day long, push your chips to the table. But his playoff schedule is about the worst playoff schedule I've ever seen for a running back. Because you've got the Bills, the Saints, and the Bucks. That's, That's his fantasy right. playoff Jeez. schedule. <laughs> like, Yikes. I just think, let somebody else... I, I know it's the kind of year you just throw your fab in on, on anybody, right? And you just hope, but... Yeah, I just, I just think I'd be out. I just think it, at this point now, I, I get it, you might get high-volume touches, but... Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't think Is I'd... this a time, though? That's an excellent point, though. Is this a time where you sell Chuba Hubbard high because people aren't looking well, at that? Well, that's the hard part. We're schedule. kind of past the universal trade deadline in most leagues. That's true. That's true. That, that, yeah. and now look, if you've still got, this is a great point. Yates, you're absolutely 100% right. I think if you have Chuba on your roster and you can still make a trade this week, this is yep. peak value, baby. You cash that ticket in. Murph makes a great uh, ex explanation and, and reason why. Murph, I want to switch gears to another guy who's probably out there too because Dalvin Cook now hurt again. We're in this situation. And I know a lot of people have said Madison's now available in their league again because over the last few weeks, people got a little disenfranchised. They needed more space. They had a lot of buys. And then next thing you know, Madison's available. Would you empty the tank for Alexander Madison, even if you didn't need him, Murph, just to have him so somebody else in this playoff push doesn't have him? So I'd look, I'd look at my schedule and I'd see 
who who's holding the fab? Who would be likely to empty their chips to get in and get him? And am I going to be playing that person in the next two to three weeks? Mm-hmm. If if those scenarios are true, yeah, I probably would. It looks likely that it's going to be two, maybe three weeks. We're waiting to see if the if the if the Vikings are going to put him on IR. But whereas you know Chuba Hubbard's injury does, well, Chuba Hubbard's ascension doesn't look great. I would say mm-hmm. that Matheson is an RB1 in the making now with, mm-hmm. with the volume. And to be honest, if the Vikings fall out of playoff contention, would you rush Cook back or would you just sit him for the rest right. of the year? Right. And they are, they're in, they're in absolutely must win territory here on out. They can afford maybe one loss to get in and their schedule's not pretty. I can't see them being in the playoff mix, you know, for the, for the NFC. So I think they just ride with Madison most of the year. I would be shelving Cook. I mean, we see what happens in two weeks, three weeks' time if he comes back. But, yeah, I'd be emptying the tank if I needed him. If I didn't need him, yeah, I'd be tempted if if, if the path to me winning went through Matteson because I just think you can never have too many good players on your roster. And as we've already seen, you might not need him now, but in a week's time, who knows? And, you know, I would also say this. If you've got Najee Harris, I would be emptying the tank for... Uh, Matteson, because I think Najee Harris is is declining, because I think they're going to put him on the shelf for the rest of the year and put him on account. Yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack here. Like I said, it was a weird week. We've lost more running backs, and you know I think in our off season we're going to have to do some soul searching here, uh, all of the fantasy football analyst community, and rethink the first round a little bit. It was something that I was kind of pushing for last year a little bit. I know in the Black Book I did. I know even on some of our shows of Fantasy Pros of, you know. Why are you taking Devontae Adams six overall? Well, maybe it's just a safer investment at this point than some of these other guys. And 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 maybe we should start thinking about the quarterbacks earlier, the elite tier of quarterbacks, because those are the guys that win you weeks, and typically they're on the field every single week as well. Again, typically speaking, but uh, there's a lot to unpack here. It's going to be a fascinating offseason for us, but we're in season now. So let's get to week 13 running backs, and let's start here at the top. Uh, Yates, we'll start with you here. We'll go back to you. Who is your number one waiver wire add at running back for week 13 in the NFL? Obviously, it goes without saying, but Alexander Madison and Chuba Hubbard are at the top of the list. Uh, But then after that, we look at the Philadelphia Eagles backfield, and I'm going to go with Boston Scott here, and also the Detroit Lions backfield, kind of in a two-way tie here for the number one spot with Boston Scott and Jamal Williams. Let's talk about Boston Scott, because now Miles Sanders aggravating the ankle injury. We haven't heard anything at the time of recording as far as what the extent of the injury is, so we don't know exactly how much time he's going to miss, but this is, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, this is the injury that forced him to miss time so sounds like we are going to not have Miles Sanders back in the lineup here for the next couple weeks at least and even if it is one week you look at Boston Scott in a you know we're getting into the territory where it's like must win games these are must win games for fantasy managers because it's going to determine playoff seating and it's going to determine even if you make the playoffs Boston Scott gets the New York Jets run defense here and that is a fantastic (laughs) matchup Jordan Howard sounds like he might miss this game as well. Even if Jordan Howard comes back, I think there's going to be a role for Boston Scott. So if we look at Scott heading into next week, I will probably, if Jordan Howard is out, if Miles Sanders is out, I will probably be ranking Boston Scott as a borderline top 15 play in this matchup. So that means that I'm willing to go 10% of my fab here, maybe even more if, again, we're in must-win territory. So if, uh, if I'm absolutely desperate and in a pinch, I can spend more than that for Boston Scott. Jamal Williams is more so to do with, I don't know if we're going to necessarily have DeAndre Swift out for this next week. He banged up that shoulder, obviously, on Thanksgiving. But with Jamal Williams, I do think that he is in the conversation for insurance policy. Like, he needs to be picked up regardless because if we do have DeAndre Swift miss this week or any other weeks moving forward, Jamal Williams immediately gets plugged in as a top Mm -hmm. 20 option at the running back position. And I'm more interested in these types of players right now at this current point of the fantasy football season versus guys who are just like fill in plays and stuff like that, where Jamal Williams, I do think has the potential to be someone that can be played next week because if DeAndre Swift misses, but also he has high end insurance policy as well. And if you're the Detroit Lions, why would you rush DeAndre Swift back? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like, why would you rush DeAndre Swift back? Because he is a cornerstone piece of your franchise moving forward. You know, you've you've got nothing to play for. You're actually like you want to lose because then you could get the number one overall pick. So why would you rush DeAndre Swift back? I think Jamal Williams needs to be picked up. And it's, it's interesting you said that because that was the same 
uh, verbiage that Murph was just using and talking about, well, you know, who, who is the insurance policy that you need that's going to be useful? And to me, Williams is that guy because if Detroit continues, or say when can Detroit continues to lose games, why would you rush Swift? There's no reason for that. So Williams actually is ahead of Scott for me, mm -hmm. just for that reason alone. And also the other reason of Jamal Williams is a pretty good running back. He has not been healthy all, most of the season. He has dealt with a myriad of injuries. But I'm with you, Gates. I'm 10% on both those guys there, I think, in that range at least. And I would put Williams over Scott. You have Scott over Williams. Murph, let's go to you. How do you look at these two guys? Is there one that you prefer, or are they neck and neck for you as well? I have Williams over, over Scott. My only concern with Scott is we've been in this situation before, and when he got that opportunity, there was Howard and there's Gamewell. Even if Howard's out, Gamewell's still sniffing around. It's a great matchup this week. Then you got to buy. You know, I think for me, I'm thinking about if it's a one week play and you're thinking, right, I need to win this week. I don't care about the future weeks. Then, um, yeah, go in on Boston Scott. If you're thinking I'm already in the playoffs or you're feeling pretty comfortable and you're thinking I'm just adding a guy, there are a few other options I would go first. And one of them is Jamal Williams because, I, like you say, I think he's a, he's a better prospect. I think he's going to play. He's got less competition. I don't think they're going to rush Swift back. And I just think overall, you haven't got the bye week to negotiate. You just can get those those done. Mm -hmm. He's going to be playing regularly. I think that week 14 bye is the only reason for me why Boston Scott is a bit... And the fact that the game well is still sniffing around. And, and we know what they're like in... in in Philadelphia, they don't like to give one guy the ball. And you've got Jalen Hurts as well. Yeah, Jalen I was Hurts, say, and Hurts runs and give... more than anybody sometimes. Exactly. So <laughs> you've, you've got this whole scenario going on where I think Scott's a decent play, and I think for one week only against that terrible Jets D, then absolutely I'd be, if I right, win, I'd deal with week 14 and week 14 all day long. Any other scenario, I'm probably, yeah, if he's available and he's the top guy and Williams is gone and Madison's gone and a few others are gone, then, then yeah, he would be, but yeah, I have Williams quite a bit ahead. I actually have someone else ahead of Scott as well. Scott's my third. Oh, okay. All nice right. Guy. Well, let's dig deeper on that one. Now I am intrigued. I'm Pete. <laughs> who's in between? Because I have I have Williams on a tier to himself. Then I have Scott. Uh, but who is in between for you? I'm fascinated to find out. So I have Ty Johnson. You guys talked up Ty Johnson quite beautifully last week. So I'm not going to rehash a lot of the points. I know a lot of people are going to be very scared about what happened on Sunday. Seven Coleman came in. He took a lot of the work away. You know, what you've got to remember is the New York Jets were in control of that football game. And so the game script allowed them to just run Tevin Coleman, to dominate the time possession, to run the clock out. That's just not going to happen with the Jets at any point for the rest of the season. They're just not. Maybe against Philly, if if Philly do what they did last week and, and, and lay an egg, maybe. But chances are that the Jets are going to be behind in a lot of games. Ty Johnson's the most explosive back. He is by far more involved in the passing game. Most good plays that come from that sort of short yardage do tend to go through him. There's no tight end, really, that's getting a lot of work there. And then on top of that, what you've got with the Jets is, you know, they, they still need to prove something. It's, it's, a, new, it's a new head coach. You know, they, they, they're trying to get things going. And, you know, other than Tim and Cole, there's not a lot of competition. I, I would not be worried about... What, what was his name? Austin, Austin Waller. Austin Waller. Yeah, yeah, yesterday Austin Walter afternoon. From the XFL. <laughs> like, let me tell you something, Murph. We went on tilt yesterday uh, in our little group chat here, Fantasy Pros, about Austin Walter and all of us saying, this is the most useless touchdown in the history of touchdowns. <laughs> Who is this guy? What's going on here? Why is this happening? Uh, if Because you know, I guess if you don't roster the, uh, the fifth running back on the Jets, uh, you can't play fantasy football anymore. If you, <laughs> I guess that's where we're at. But but to your point, you're right. Game script certainly portends to Ty Johnson being more useful. And uh, again, that's a player we all wanted to pick up last week. So if he's still out there, I would certainly put him in that conversation for all the reasons you're saying, Murph. Uh, for you, who is your number three Yates when you're looking through? Yeah, I've got uh, Matt Breida. Uh, Matt mm -hmm. Breida here uh, for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I think, and Breida is ne not necessarily someone that I am. Super excited to pick up, but he's in the territory where I'm at least intrigued. And he's been extremely productive for Buffalo over the past three games. He's uh, in half PPR. He's finished the last three games as the running back 11, the running back 28, and the running back 15. And as we look at the situation now in Buffalo, it gets a little bit clearer because Zach Moss was that healthy scratch last week. So we've got Breida. We've got Devin Singletary. The only issue here is that Matt Breida, even though he was 
one of two running backs in this backfield, he still only saw 11 total opportunities last week. Mm -hmm. So he's productive. He's finding the end zone, but I just don't know if we can necessarily rely on him. So you have to put it in, in this mindset and say, okay, where am I going to rank him? Right. If I, if uh, looking ahead to week 13, where am I going to rank Matt Breida? It's a mid range running back three, probably like someone that you can play if you're in a pinch. And I think that's kind of where the rest of the running back landscape is at once we get outside of Boston Scott and Jamal Williams this week, it's like, you can play these guys if you're in a pinch, and that's mm. kind of where Brita falls. So Brita is number three for me, uh, and I think that he's at least worth a pickup if you're in need of a running back. For all those Just, reasons, Brita is also my number three, too, Gates. And, and it's, um, again, it's a small amount of fab. We're talking like the th- right. two, three percent mm. kind of range here, depending on your needs. But it can't, it's not going to be great because, like you said, the volume is just, it doesn't exist in that offense. Murph, I struggle here after Brita. Because, like, Dontrell Hilliard had that one big play yesterday that accounted for a good chunk of his yards, but he's on a bye this week. Uh, But you imagine that's a guy that continues to get work. How do you approach the rest of this group after these top three that you have? Because we do have a bye here with the Tennessee guys. We do Mm -hmm. have some other issues here where it's just not very exciting. But is there somebody else for you that you think is worthy of uh, speculating on? Yeah, so I, I breed at four, and and I'm not worried about the usage yesterday or uh, Thanksgiving because he got the ball early. When the game was mm-hmm. close, he got the ball. Singletary got a lot of the late work when the game was kind of done. So I'm I'm less worried. But again, I think he's a high-end RB3 going forward. After that, I'm not worried about the rest of these guys. I don't want Hilliard and these one player. I don't want Foreman. I don't want these. I don't want Brandon Bolden. I don't want these guys. These guys are just roster clogs. They sit on your bench. You're going to play them in a pinch. They'll score you six to nine points at a push, and they'll lose you weeks. I want to look at the guys who are going to get potentially an opportunity going forward. And that is really hard to project. So the next guy I have on my list is Benny Snell. Now, anyone that's listened to me over the last couple of weeks, I've been saying that Najee Harris is going to be winding down. Because, again, we're looking at the Steelers, probably not going to make the playoffs. You know, their schedule is horrendous. They play nobody who's got a less than 500 record. He was on pace two weeks ago to have over 1,020 snaps played. He's played over 100 snaps more than anybody else with the exception of Zeke Elliott, who's now about to be faded for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to run Najee Harris into the ground because two things are going to happen. Either he gets injured or he burns out. Either way, it's not a good look for for the Steelers. So they're either going to start to ease him off. And we're starting to see this. From when I sent this tweet two weeks ago, I said, look, he's on this pace. It's not going to sustain. He's not, you know, he was on pace for 415 touches, which would have been the second biggest uh, running back season in the last 10 years. Like, that's not going to happen on a team that isn't going to make the playoffs. And we saw yesterday, 36 touches uh, or 36 snaps played. We saw it all the way down to just a handful of touches. I think he got 11, which is his lowest of the season. And I think you're going to start to see Benny Snell come through. And I think Benny Snell is either they're either going to rest Harris, they're going to cut his workload down, maybe go to a committee, or if something is is wrong with Najee Harris, they just bench him completely. It's not going to be McFarlane, it's going to be Snell that gets that job. So I would rather spend my 1% of fab or free, because <laughs> no one's on the radar of Benny Snell unless they're listening to me. No one is. So I'm thinking I would rather take a dart throw on that than have a roster clock. Because, all right, if it doesn't work after two weeks, you can drop him. But if it hits, you have got a, a, well, a high-end RB2 in the wings, and you're going to be ahead of everyone else, and you're not going to have to pay the fab for it. So I, I like to have, like, three of these guys on my bench now. Just guys, and, and if they hit, great. And if they don't, I recycle and move on. And to your point, Murph, this is also the time to be proactive. If you're a playoff team... I love your point you're making there because this is a great thing and everybody who was listening out there should, you know, remember this or keep this in mind here this particular week and next. You know, if you're making this playoff push, start to look ahead if you know your playoff team and start to look at the bench and say, is this person really helpful to me or is it more important to have an insurance policy on this running back or that running back there? And I think that's something that the better fantasy players do and prepare for the worst because inevitably in 2021, that's what happens. You get the worst, typically speaking. Uh, anybody else here, Murph, uh, on this running back list? Uh, Tony Jones, uh, Tevin Coleman, Lindsey Burkett. Anybody kind of pop to you, or is it just kind of stay away? No, I'd, I'd stay away from all those guys. Again, I think they're all roster clogs. 
none of them are going to offer you anything. I mean, listen, if you went in on Tony Jones last week, I did. I sprinkled him in a couple of places as a late ad. Um, it didn't work out. I mean, we know the Saints offense is terrible, but we expect Kamara to come back in here because I think Sean Payton, Sean Payton's one of those few rare coaches where he won't throw the towel in. He'll mm-hmm. play every single week as if it's a playoff final. Like that mm-hmm. is what he will do. And I think when Kamara is, we know he's close. When he's when he's ready, he'll play. So I I, I don't want to go with Tony Jones. Uh, any of these guys, I just think they're all roster clubs. I mean, the only one that would have any any sort of sprinkle would be Lindsay, only because in Miami they just don't know what they're doing, and it would just take one explosive play for him to jump to the top <laughs> of the the depth chart. But even then, you still got to buy to negotiate. So uh, yeah, I don't think so. Yates, yeah, how about for you? Any of these other names move the needle for you at all in terms of fab? You look at that list. You mentioned Tony Jones Jr., Philip Lindsay, Tevin Coleman, Rex Burkhead, even Austin Walter. And I think those are all guys where you can just leave them on your waiver wire. No one's going to be picking those guys up, you know? So it's like you can just leave them out there. If you're in an, if you're in a pinch, if you're trying to deal with this Chris McCaffrey injury and you're trying to take some depth, you can go to the waiver wire and they will be there waiting for you. So I don't think that you really need to put bids in on any of these guys. It's really just going to be, all right, which one has the best matchup out of that list? And I'll plug them in if I need to. But again, if you're playing any of those guys, you are probably not making the playoffs. (laughs) And I know most of you, what you want waiting for you in the morning is a nice, wonderful bowl of cereal next to your coffee. And we've got a better version of that here with Magic Spoon. That's right, everybody. Magic Spoon, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving only 140 calories it's keto friendly gluten free grain free soy free but not taste free it's also low in carbs too for those of you around the holidays who ate too much pie at thanksgiving but you've also got amazing flavors over there at magic spoon you can build your own box which is awesome they've got cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter blueberry cinnamon cookies and cream that's my favorite and the maple waffle and i know some of you have tweeted me that you 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 tried the magic spoon and you liked it so i'm telling you guys the magic spoon is good and it's good for you i don't know what's better than that Accept a deal, and I got a deal for you. Go to magicspoon.com slash fantasypros and grab a bundle of custom cereal today to try it, and be sure to use that promo code fantasypros when you do at checkout. Uh, they are so confident, Magic Spoon, in their product that they will back it 100% happiness guaranteed, which is something if you play fantasy football, you are far away from 100% happiness. I can guarantee you that. And uh, if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, but that ain't going to happen because you're going to love it. So go to magicspoon.com slash fantasy pros. Again, use that promo code fantasy pros to get your guilt free cereal on and you get five dollars off your order at Magic Spoon. So go get yourself a bowl today. And Murph, I was wondering this too, because you know, you know, here in the States we have our Thanksgiving, we have our football traditions. In the UK, you just get like a free day of three games in a row. Do you just stay up all night and watch the football games on Thanksgiving? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I game passed uh, the Saints Bills game. I kind of knew which way that was going to go, so I woke up the next morning, put it on Game in Forty, and watched that. Um, yeah, I mean, you say that. I mean, so to give you an example, the the Bears uh, Lions game was on at sort of five thirty. Right. It, it kicked off. Um, yeah, I mean, let, let's flex these games, please. Like, please, can we just not have this? I've been saying it for years. People yell at me, Murph. They're like, no, it's tradition. I'm like, well, I would like traditionally to have a football game that I want to watch. And typically, yeah. traditionally, the Lions are not very good. I'm just saying. No, I mean, they did one with the other two. I mean, you, you couldn't you couldn't odds the fact that the Saints were just going to capitulate and lose all their players. But, you know, you have to look at this. We have a, a similar thing. So in, in the UK, for the Premier League, we have the Boxing Day game, so effectively, I, it's a really right. poor equivalent, but if I have to name one. No, but I, so, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Boxing Day is the day after Christmas, so that's mm-hmm. the day that everyone, kind of, if you go to one set of parents on the Christmas Day, you go to the other set of parents on, on the Boxing Day, you have all the leftover food, and you probably get more food. It's just basically a second Christmas, that's basically all it is. It's the second day of Christmas, um, and we have the Boxing Day games on, but they're, but they're flexed in the TV picks the best games like the, the cameras pick the best games and that is how it works and that way you've got you've always got a great game on boxing day to watch and it's it's fantastic and they're trying to do away with it um to have this winter break for the sake of the players and not have games over there and it would be a big loss if they do do that uh, there you go uh, words of wisdom let's flex these games let's also flex our muscles about some wide receivers and see if we can find a couple uh, my number one this week is kendrick Bourne, who. 
Well, despite the lack of huge volume, continues to be incredibly efficient. And I know I talked about him last week, uh, but I'm going to talk about him again. I'm not emptying the tank for Kendrick Bourne, but he's part of this offense. He was a piece that flew under the radar, I think, coming onto the Patriots last year. And I do think that he, the rest of the season down the stretch here, he's going to be somebody that they do lean on. And, and Mac Jones is looking for him as he continues to evolve as a passer. Murph, who is your number one wide receiver ad this week? I have Kendrick Bourne as well. I mean, you just look at Sunday. He ran roots on 29 of his 33 snaps, according to BFF. Three touchdowns in his last three games, especially when that level of competition goes up for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Kendrick Bourne is who he's looking for. Him and Hunter Henry. They're the two he's looking for in the red zone where it matters. So I'm, I'm with you. Kendrick Bourne, for me, is he's the wide receiver on the Patriots I want to own. I know Jacoby Myers is a nice, safe you know, PPR options are like the Hunter Renfro of the Patriots where he'll get you a nice amount of points and you get your wide receiver three performance every week. You can take it to the bank, but he's not going to get in the end zone. I mean, how hard did they have to try when they were out because I want to get in the ball in? Um, so, yeah, I, I want Kendrick Bourne, uh, especially if I'm looking at upside in my flex position and I want to chase touchdowns. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm on Kendrick Bourne all day long. Yates, how about for you? Who's your number one wide receiver ad in week 13? I'm, I'll get to my number one. I'm actually going to disagree with you both on Kendrick Bourne. Uh, I've got well, I expect six. you to because you yeah. disagree so, with me last week. <laughs> yeah, so I do think that Kendrick Bourne is someone that you can add, right? I don't have him down at like 10 in my wide receiver rankings or anything like that. I've got him at six. But you look at his upcoming schedule and it's Buffalo and then a bye week. And then, you know, so I think that is something where... I don't know if I'm going to want to play him against Buffalo. Like, he's getting the targets. I get that. But that is an extremely tough matchup. And then you look at the bye week. You have to navigate that. And then mm-hmm. we're right into playoff, right? And so uh, with week 15. So I just don't know what my level of confidence is going to be in Kendrick Bourne and adding him over the next two weeks. Because, yeah, he had, you know, 61 receiving yards yesterday. He had the two touchdowns. But that a lot of that yardage, like that defender, if that defender just ensures that he pushes him out of bounds, that doesn't happen, right? Like he he just kind of like nudged him because he thought he was going to go out. So a lot of that, I think last week was a little bit fluky. Now he has been getting the job done. I'm not going to argue that, you know, wide receiver five in standard 40 and four the past three weeks. So he has been getting it done. But you just look at the next couple weeks and you say, okay, I just don't know if I want to rely on that. The guy that I'm going to have at my number one is and this is a very like 8% fab bid is Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay here with Jason Garrett out of town got seven targets yesterday. And that is at least intriguing to me with his talent level to make me buy in at least to the level where I say, okay, he's a flex play moving forward. I don't know if we're going to ever get the low end wide receiver to Kenny Galladay that we thought we were going to get in draft season, or, you know, some people were even talking about him as a top 12 option when he signed in New York. We're definitely not going to get that But as I look at these players who could be key pieces for a playoff push, Kenny Galladay is at least intriguing to me to add because I know the talent. I know the talent and I know that he can be a big play option as a flex play for my fantasy football lineups. It's just a matter of him getting the targets. And that hasn't been the case over the past several weeks. That changed with Jason Garrett out of town now. So I'm adding him and I am going to put him on my bench for this next week. Maybe play him as a flex play uh, up against Miami and then see how this goes. So Kenny Galladay gets the nod at the number one wide receiver spot for me. I love this because I could not disagree with you more. This is great. (laughs) This is going to be fantastic. (laughs) Tredavious White out for the year. Buffalo Bills corner. I know they play the Bills twice, the Patriots still. I know they play once in that playoff run too. We're talking about fantasy. You lose your number one corner like that, that changes things significantly in a secondary. Now, look, Poyer's amazing, and Hyde's a great player, too. All those guys are great. But they've also been nicked up these last few weeks. And this is this is the benefit for all of you out there, too. If you don't know already, Scott Beigman and I are doing that IDP show every single week here at Fantasy Pros. Again, it's behind. It's for our premium people, you know? you got to be a premium fantasy pro to get it. But this is where that stuff starts to trickle over. So Yates is 100% right. Kendrick Bourne isn't moving the needle, but Bourne is a guy that I want on my bench. Galladay, I struggle with Yates. I really do. I struggle because I feel like we're caught up in the name brand of Kenny Galladay, which is something, Mm -hmm. uh, again, fantasy people tend to do. The volume, he's like a round peg in a square hole with this offense, I feel like. I feel like they have no idea what to do with him. He would be so much better if he was on the Eagles. You could have just stopped that sentence as they have no idea what to do. Like You could have just stopped (laughs) it right there. But that's the thing. It's like, do I want the guy who, yes, you know, Kendrick Bourne is not Kenny Galladay, But you know what? Kendrick Bourne is producing. Or do I want the name of Kenny Galladay on my roster? Murph, I want to talk to you about these guys because you're the other analyst on the show today. How do you feel about Kenny Galladay? Do you have him in your top five? No, I don't don't want any part of Kenny Galladay. And actually, it's it's kind of a bit of a both. 
it's the name recognition. He's not really done anything in the last year and a half. He's always nicked up, injured. He's got some kind of injury. I don't know how healthy Kenny Golley is. I think he's miles removed from those peak seasons he had in Detroit. But the other factor is, you know, he got those targets yesterday, but there was a key piece missing, and that's Kadarius Tony. And, and Kadarius Shepard. Tony and and Shepard, Shepard, too. I mean, there's nobody there. He should be an alpha, but he's not. Yeah, I mean, he was giving up targets to, to Darius Slayton and, and Colin Johnson yesterday. Like, I, I just think when we don't know what this, this New York offense is. We we had no clue at the Garrett. We're going to have no idea about the Kitchens, what this is going to look like. I, I don't mind it from a shot. I'm going to take a shot. It's not going to cost me that much. I take a shot. If it lands, great. But it's the sort of play that if I did it, I can also see myself moving on before the fantasy playoffs thinking, ah, mm-hmm. oh, well, that didn't work. I, I, I would right. never, I don't think it's going to, but I can, I definitely respect taking the shot because I'd rather take a shot on a guy like Galladay and it not work. than just going to pick up a, a meh like guy in between who's just going to get you, you know, eight to 10 points. And that will be it. I think, you know, you've got to take your shots, whether that's Galladay. I don't think it is, but I respect the play because I think, well, it could work, and if it does, you're going to get him on pennies on the dollar, and it's going to land. And and maybe and, and look again, I have him probably higher than than you do, Murph, in my, my rankings this week. But to Yates's point, when you put a guy like Holiday on your roster, especially after a change in OC, you hope for the best. But it doesn't actually mean it's going to be that outcome for me at this time of year. I want what's working, not what's a project. And again, th- that's okay. Everybody has a different approach, and I think this is why it's a good debate and a good conversation to have here on this show. Uh, Murph, who is your number two out of curiosity here going into the week? I've gone with someone who's absolutely burned me so many times, but I just <laughs> feel like I have to go back to that well. Like, I just need that punishment of pain. And it's um, <laughs> it's Ru- it's Russell Gage. I, I walked into the season thinking that Russell Gage was going to be a dude, like a proper guy you could get an absolute screaming value and he was going to do a great job and then he get nicked up he's injured he misses six games and he comes back but you know he led the falcons yesterday with seven targets um you're looking at what he did yesterday six for 62 all right it's not great but it's you know it's 12 points in your flex it's better than what most of the options out there are going to give you and then this week coming this is a great matchup he's got the tampa Bay buccaneers who you're talking about corners they are nicked up more than anybody because they lost Jamal Dean. I don't think he's probably going to play on Sunday unless something miraculous happens. Carlton Davis is gone. So you've got Sean Murphy Bunton, who's their three. And then you're going all the way back on the other side. You're either going to have Ross Cockrell, who is terrible. Um, I've watched him too much to just watch him give up big touchdowns all season. Or you've got Pierre Desir, who, <laughs> I mean, like this guy was left on free agency <laughs> Until I think October right. when or September when the Buccaneers decided to pick him up because they lost Richard Sherman, they lost everyone else and signed him. Like this guy wasn't wanted by any of the thirty two teams. So you've got an opportunity here with, with Gage. Like I know Matt Matt Ryan's arm is going slash gone and I but you know, Carson Wentz launched bombs yesterday. Um the opportunities are gonna be there to take shots and you know, if you're a rookie head coach, you're playing the champs realize you're probably not going to win you've just got to go swinging and i think this is one of those weeks coming up where i can see gage going off i think he yeah. gets in the end zone and i think he could have a monster week and then confidence is a funny thing even if you lose and you put a big week up against the champs and you think we're like all in the end zone twice against the buccaneers that starts to just fuel the rest of the team and then the things happen so i i like gage for the rest of the season i think it's a great matchup and i think they can kick on from here and try and finish the team or try and finish the season i don't know well or, <laughs> respectable I, I don't, I don't, yeah respectable like you just know, finish just finish the season i think I maybe mean, they, just they finish are it. i mean they're the worst five and six team i've ever seen um, they're pretty because, bad you're not uh, you're are, not wrong uh, but I think they've got opportunities, and there's no one for competition out there. So I like Gage. I think match up, and let's see what happens. You encapsulated the Gage journey quite well because I had a few <laughs> shares myself that I dropped and then found myself at any given time having to pick him back up again and being disappointed for the most part. I got one good game out of him in one of these weeks. I did get that. Yates, when you're looking at this board now, I know Galladay's your one. Who is your two at wide receiver? My, 
Yeah, my number two wide receiver on the week is Devontae Parker. Uh, and Parker is another guy who has just been in and out of the lineup. He's not someone that we can necessarily trust. But you look at the players in this list who you can say, all right, are they going to be valuable flex plays for me moving forward? And I think that Devontae Parker can be when he's on the field. You look at his season, he's only played in five games, but he's had a minimum of seven targets. Like that's his lowest target output in any of those games, seven, nine, seven, nine, and 11 targets. And he's been producing with Tua Tungavailoa as his quarterback. So I think Devontae Parker, it's a absolute risk. You know, he could be one of these guys that you pick up and then he gets injured next week. We don't even know if he's going to be coming back into the lineup this next week. Like there's still some uncertainty there, but with Parker, he is one of these guys. You look at his upcoming schedule. He's got the Giants in week 13. He's got the bye week in week 14. So that's something to be con- you know concerned about and uh, and consider. But then the playoffs, New York, uh, New York Jets, then the New-, New Orleans Saints, who aren't as tough on opposing wide receivers as you might think. And then Tennessee, they're just getting gashed by opposing wide receivers as well. So that is a very favorable matchup and uh, a playoff schedule for Devontae Parker. So he's one of those guys that I feel like I can pick up. I can stash him on my bench until he comes back, and then I'm going to feel comfortable that he is going to at least return flex value for me in the fantasy playoffs. Okay, so you've got those two guys at the top in Galladay uh, and um, the last one you just discussed. Parker. So Devontae Parker. So let's go to the rest of this board here for a second because it's names like T.Y. Hilton, Rondell Moore, Sterling Shepard, who's been hurt for weeks now, LaVisca Chenault, who we all were fed that bill of goods that we're going to get LaVisca Chenault the ball more. And it happened for like, what, two plays to open the game and then it all fell apart. Deshaun Jackson, who had a, a big Thanksgiving game that I'm sure a lot of people saw and a lot of people will chase. So it is a landmine riddled uh, wide receiver group this week, Yates. Are there any other names in particular that you think are worth an investment? I'm with Murph on Russell Gage. I've got him at three on the week. Uh, I think that he is absolutely someone that we can pick up. And he was he's what I would describe as like a high floor play, right? Like he's someone where I at least feel comfortable now with Cordero Patterson in the lineup, apparently being the secret to Atlanta actually moving the ball, which is just showing you how crazy 2021 is. But I at least feel confident that Russell Gage is going to not burn me. Right. And that's kind of what I want in in uh, certain lineups right now i've got some spots where i'm like i'm you know i was trotting out jamison crowder and he burned me yesterday with zach wilson you know one reception for five yards it's like if i can at least get a high floor play at least for next week you're talking about tampa bay and then moving forward favorable schedule as well i think that's something that has value so as a flex play moving forward russell gage i think is now starting to enter into that top 45 maybe top 40 conversation at the wide receiver position that's worth going after deshaun jackson is actually number four for me and this is more so in like deeper leagues and a mm-hmm. for a lineup that you're in must win territory and you need to take some shots right you need to be able to take these guys and plug them into your lineup that are going to be able to push your roster over the top. And Deshaun Jackson has that ability to be able to take that deep play. And we saw what Derek Carr was over the few weeks that we had the absence of Henry Ruggs and then Deshaun Jackson coming into town and trying to get up to speed. The offense didn't look the same, but now that we have that deep downfield threat here for Derek Carr, he's not afraid to push the ball deep downfield. And we're seeing that And Deshaun Jackson, the Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Raiders get to take on Washington this Mm -hmm. next week. So if you are in a must win spot, you need that flex play that you're just saying, I'm down by quite a bit. I need to be able to take that or I'm projected to be down by quite a bit. I need that shot, that weak winning play at the flex spot. Deshaun Jackson is at least worth considering. You just sold me on Deshaun Jackson moving up two spots in my rankings. Well done, man. Well done, Yates. Very nice. Uh, that's but, what I want to be known for. That's just, backing up Deshaun Jackson. Backing up Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> that's the hill to die on in 2021. Yep. <laughs> Here's a fun question for you, Yates. Uh, I just finished uh, doing a pod with Pat Fitzmorris, and we were talking about this. If Atlanta doesn't make any significant gains in their running back situation year over year, where would you feel comfortable drafting Cordero Patterson? <laughs> You're talking about like redraft league yeah, redraft next leagues. year? Like if Cordero yeah. Patterson mm-hmm. is the only guy in town, really? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Because uh, we were talking, how do you not take a guy who's going to finish as an RB1 and a wide receiver one in the second round? Like, how do you oh, avoid that? man, right? I hate that question. Uh, that's why uh, I asked But it. I think you're right. Like, I think that... <laughs> I think that we at least have to consider him because of his dual eligibility that we would have to at least consider him. Now, I'd be interested to see, do they take that away? Do fantasy football platforms take that away next year? Because he has been more of a running back than a, a wide receiver recently. But I don't know. I don't know. I just... Yeah, I think in the second round, third round, I think you'd have to consider him, and that is just crazy. Murph, this is a more provocative conversation than T.Y. Hilton, so I'm going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> if Cordero Patterson, let's say, qualifies at both because fantasy platforms decide that, well, we don't want to put him in a box and we're not exactly sure what to do and he qualifies at more than one position going into next year with the season he just had and no significant 
running back threat that's brought in of note, where do you draft Cordero Patterson next year, theoretically? <sighs> The issue, the issue with Cordero Patterson, right? Forget the I fact. I think there's that he's issues. I want to say there's, well, issues. A, there's a plural okay. on there. Well, let's forget the fact that he's done nothing in his career of note until this, right? <laughs> he plays in the toughest run defense division in football. Yes. He's got the Buccaneers, the Saints, and the Panthers. So he's going to play six games against top ten, top twelve defenses. That's a significant part of your schedule, where he is. You know, effectively, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a down arrow. Get a get a schedule where you get a couple more games like that. All of a sudden, that's half your schedule is against top twelve teams. Um, I I don't think I could push it any earlier than the third round. I'd let someone else that's take fair. the risk because I just think at the conference he's in. Plus, if if they seriously do not invest, I question why Arthur Smith is going to stay because they need a huge upgrade everywhere. Um, and then also the quarterback position is also going to be another one. I just think with Arthur Smith, he he will. I think he'll want to get that air game going, and I think yeah. that will take less away from Patterson. But yeah, I mean, if if it was all circumstances again, and it was exactly how it is now, yeah, give me give me him in the second round because I know mm. he's going to return an RB one. But... Well, that's the thing, and not only that, but the dual eligibility, that flexibility on bye weeks, and what you can do with all these injuries we've had. I mean, yeah. a guy, I mean, it's a lot to take in. Let's take in the rest of these. Doing it. <laughs> I can't, I can't either, it but it's a fun conversation. Yeah, uh, and you never know. We say this team's going to address this in the offseason. How many times we come back and say, I can't believe they didn't address this in the offseason. <laughs> uh, when you're looking at the rest of the wide receivers here, Yates gave us a couple good names. I know you just talked about Gage. Is there anybody else that moves the needle for you that you think is worth speculating on? This week, I quite like Josh Reynolds. Now, Josh Reynolds is a player who has flashed in the past. Uh, he flashed in L.A. He flashed a little bit of Tennessee. I don't know why he was released, but he was. But you got to remember, he's already got chemistry with, with Goff, if there is such a thing as chemistry with, <laughs> with, with Jared Goff. Um, but, but I, you know, I you have to look at why a team like Detroit Lions would sign Josh Reynolds mm-hmm. at the stage they're at where they're clearly not going to make the pass. They're clearly probably going to be the number one pick. So why are you adding guys to the roster? And I think they're just trying to solve this Jared Goff puzzle of, can we actually play with this guy next year or do we have to let him go? So let's just sign someone that he's played with off the street mm. and let's just see if something happens. And you know what? On Thanksgiving, he looked great. Like he, he, was the only, he looked really good. You know, six, And he had some seven, targets eight. there that he didn't haul in that you saw Goff in key situations looking for Reynolds, which was something yeah. also worth noting that doesn't show up in the box score, no. but it's something you saw in the game. And that and that's why I quite think, I think about Reynolds and think, you know what, he's the sort of guy I'd like to have on my roster. Maybe not sure if I'd start him next week, but, you know, if this progression goes up, I really like the fact that, you know, he led the team in targets and yards with that relationship with Goff. He's got something to prove. He's been cut by two teams. He's hanging on for his career. This isn't just a guy who's coming off big paychecks and he's just sort of just trying to hang around. You know, this guy's playing for his next deal, uh, whether that's in Detroit, whether that's somewhere else, you know. And we see this with someone like Bashar Perriman all the time. Guys who are at the end of a contract just trying to get another contract, they do everything in their power and absolutely just ball out to get that contract. And I, I just like that perfect storm of a team that are just trying to win or trying to do something with guys who were just trying to get stuff done with that relationship with Goff. I just think it's all a perfect storm where he can have some good weeks here. Now I'm not saying he's going to put up wide receiver one weeks here, but I think, you know, he, he could easily have some top 40 weeks going forward. And that, I, that interests me. That does interest me quite a bit. So he'll be getting on some of my rosters this week. All right. So besides Reynolds, is there anybody else that interests you too? Any other deep names? I'd be playing. I'd be playing. Looking ahead now. I'd, I look at the rest of those names. Uh, you know, your Ty's and everyone else. They are what they are. Like you know what you're mm-hmm. getting. I like Deshaun Jackson as that sort of play. But I'm actually looking ahead. There's two guys on the roster who who got bye weeks this week, and that's Nick Westbrook, who effectively is the one. And I know he didn't really show up in the box score, but you know the amount of targets he had yesterday, um, the the snaps he played, routes he ran. You know, everything looks like this guy's a one. Okay poor target but you know he got out he got out coached by by belichick and the patriots i mean he's not the only wide receiver that's gone missing against them and won't be the last either if julio jones is not back in week 14 he is a 
a wide receiver one on his team. And he's going to have a great opportunity to do something. The other one is Randall Cobb. Now, Randall Cobb is, again, on a bye. Now, he is 10th in wide receivers in terms of red zone targets. Um, he's had 12 on the year, but he's only caught four, and all of them have gone for touchdowns. When they're getting down there, that run game's not working. They've got a nicked up Aaron Jones. You know, Well, Cobb Rogers was hurt in that game, there, too. He was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when, when they're down there, Rodgers is looking for him. And I think, again, I'm just thinking about shots. I want guys, if I'm not going to go with these static plays, I want guys who are going to get in the end zone. Give me someone like Cobb, because I think in some of the matchups they got, I think he can he can definitely find a way to, to get in there. So I like the fact he's getting the red zone looks. I like the fact he's getting red zone targets. I just think, well, do you know what? If Rather than T.Y. Hilton, who I'm not going to play this week, I'm going to pick up Randall Cobb for free, because no mm-hmm. one's going to pick up Randall Cobb this week. No one, no one's going to contest me for Randall Cobb. True. I'll stash him on my bench if I've got a, a healthy roster, and I'll, I'll roll him out next week in my flex if I need him. All right, moving on to the quarterback position. Last week, Mac Jones was my guy. This week, it's going to be Taylor Heineke uh, on the road against Las Vegas Raiders. I like the Heineke matchup there for him. I think he can throw the ball in Las Vegas, and also on top of that, Heineke does give you a little bit of rushing equity. Yates, for a quarterback for you, who do you like streaming this week? Tua Tagovailoa has actually been incredibly consistent uh, over the past several weeks now, and he is uh, he is the fourth quarterback in NFL history to complete more than 80% of his passes in back-to-back games with a minimum of 30 attempts. So Tua is just getting the job done, and he's doing it with just Jalen Waddle, and that's it. So you look at the New York Giants. I know that they slowed down Philadelphia, but Tua Tagovailoa is a better passer than Jalen Hurts, so I expect the offense there to be fine. So Tua is someone that you can plug in to your lineup as a streaming option. The other guy that I'll consider here is Justin Fields. And I think it's going back to what we talked about at the running back position and a little bit with wide receivers. It's the guys that have this like league winning upside, the guys who I can at least feel comfortable with their long-term outlook and fields. I don't know if he's going to be back from his rib injury this next week up against Arizona, but as we move forward, when fields is healthy and the starter for Chicago, he's a borderline top 10 play at the quarterback position in fantasy. And he is currently rostered in only 19% of leagues. So fields has the ability to be able to plug, be plugged into your lineup when he is healthy and he has like league winning upside because of what he can do as a runner. So those are two guys that I'm willing to take the shot on. The other one that I'll throw out here, yeah, I do like Heineke this next week. We got to see what he does here on Monday Night Football. Sure. But the other guy, we just got word that Taysom Hill is actually taking say, first yeah. team reps here in uh, in practice for the New Orleans Saints. Sounds like he's still battling that foot injury. We don't know exactly <laughs> if he's going to be fully healthy for this next game, but we know that it's just the same thing with uh, Justin Fields that when Taysom Hill is healthy and active with his rushing ability. He does come with plenty of upside himself. So I will uh, also throw in Taysom Hill there. Murph, who do you want to stream a quarterback this week? See, I think Taysom Hill now with that news is is definitely by far getting to near the top of the list. I think because of that rushing floor, we know we've seen it uh, in five games last year. You know, he, he will produce numbers at the position as much as it's not pretty to watch. It doesn't really matter. I actually like Mac Jones this week, and I know it's a tough matchup against Buffalo, but there's just something about Mac Jones this year where he walked in on, you know, chip on his shoulder and against better opposition, he's really getting it done. You know, mm-hmm. we saw against Tennessee and I know Tennessee are beat up and I know it's not the same team, but you know, they're still a team that are first place in their division. You know, they've got some big wins under the belt this year. Great coaching staff. We saw this against Cleveland. You know, he, he just seems to be when, when the game is requiring him to step up and score points he is elevating his level. You know, over the last three weeks, he's the quarterback eight, um, including those two performances, you know, two 20 plus performances in the last three weeks. I, I like him in this matchup because I don't think he's got anywhere to hide. I think he's just going to lay it all out there. You know, they're playing for a division title, which nobody expected them to. Mm-hmm. And this, this effectively is a, is a, it's a must win game. And I think with Belichick and McDaniels, I think they're going to go nuts. And I think I, I, just really like the way that Mac Jones is handling his rookie season. He's really impressed me and, and a lot of people with his boys and, and the way that he's developing. So, yeah, give me Mac Jones. I, I quite like that Jones Vaughn stack in a, in, a, <laughs> in, a, in a DFS lineup this week and just hey see, man, what, look, see what you cash. The kid has been efficient. The kid has been smart with the football. Uh, and he, you're right. And, I mean, he's used to the spotlight. So, he, you know, all those years in Alabama there playing and, you know, behind Tua and then eventually – 
you know, in place of him, you know, he's going to show up in the big games, you hope. And this will be a real test. This Buffalo <laughs> secondary gonna is going to be a real test. It is. It's, it's, it's going to be a playoff it. environment for sure. That's yep. going to be the feel of it, which is fun. How about at the tight end position? Murph, we'll start with you. Is there somebody worth streaming for you this week? Tough one, but, uh, you know, I really like Foster Moreau this week. I, I don't think that uh, Waller's going to go. It looks unlikely that he's going to go. Moreau's been very useful when he's had to come in as, like, this substitute. And, again, I, at the position, I'm looking at touchdowns. I don't care about the receptions. Like, I, give me a guy who's going to get in the end zone that's going to – that and a couple of receptions is going to get you the, the tight end one position you need. So I, I really like Foster Moreau uh, this week against Washington. And I think uh, – I, I, I think, you know, as a prop bet, I'd put him in to get in the end zone this week. Yates, I've got Conklin uh, at Detroit this week, especially now with Dalvin Cooks out of the passing game. Maybe Conklin steps back into some more targets there. Who do you think is worth streaming at tight end? I'm going to go to Cole Komet. Uh, It's been Mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, up and down here for Komet, right? He goes with eight targets in week nine and then two in week 11 and then 11 in uh, in week 12. So it's a little bit of a yo-yo here with Cole Komet's production, but I do think that he is becoming a key part of this offense. And I think even if Allen Robinson comes back into the lineup this next week, uh, that really doesn't move the needle much for me. So Cole Komet, I'm following the targets at the tight end position. I do agree with Murphy with Foster Moreau, though. He is someone, I've got him at three in my tight end list, and that is just because I don't have that official word yet on on Darren Waller. It sounds like it was a strained IT band or something like that. So we don't know exactly if Waller is going to miss. If we did know that, Foster Moreau would probably jump up to the top of the list for me. Jack Doyle is also someone that I think we can Mm. consider going up against Houston, right? He emerged this past week with a very, very solid game. Currently the tight end one on the week. We'll see what happens here tonight. But uh, I think that Jack Doyle is someone we can consider as a mid-range tight end two next week, a desperation play if you're in a pinch. Uh, If you have Waller and you aren't able to get your hands on Foster Moreau, I think Jack Doyle is a fine pivot option. It's that time again. It's time for our top five waiver wire ads for week 13 in the NFL. Uh, Yates, let's kick off with you. Who are your top five ads? Yeah, so we talked about it. I've got Boston Scott at number one, Jamal Williams at number two. Those guys could be interchangeable if you want to. Jamal Williams with a little bit long term, uh, longer long-term outlook, and then Boston Scott as the immediate play. Kenny Galladay for me at number three, which feels great. Uh, Devontae Parker at four, and then Russell Gage at five. All right. How about you, Murph? Who are your top five guys to add this week? So I have, uh, I have Jamal Williams at one. I've Ty Johnson at two. Uh, I have Kendrick Bourne at three. I have Russell Gage at four. And uh, believe it or not, I do have Benny Snell at five. I really do believe that this is going to be the start of him. Maybe not this week, but if something happens to Najee Harris and that production goes down again this week, he's going to be very expensive next week. So I want to get a week ahead of the curve and get him on my bench. I can tell you right now, if Benny Snell somehow has a huge playoff game at some point here, for people in fantasy, every you're going to have a lot more followers. You're going to have <laughs> triple the amount of followers. It's going to happen. You watch. Uh, for me this week, uh, Jamal Williams is the top for me. Kendrick Bourne is two. Taylor Heineke, three. Uh, this is also the time to start adding a second quarterback if you don't have one, just so you have one in case his insurance. Uh, you mentioned two before Yates. He's another one worth adding. Four is Boston Scott. Five is the Kansas City Chiefs defense for me, which brings us to the streaming defense of the week. Kansas City Chiefs is where I want to go. I can't believe I'm here, but this is it. This is real life. Uh, and right now they finish as a top. 12 unit the last three weeks and they finished as a top five unit last time we saw them on the field so give me the chiefs this week uh and i think they're a decent defense going forward uh yates is there a streaming defense you got your eye on this week i definitely think kansas city is a very solid option uh especially with that teddy bridgewater injury we don't know if that's going to linger into this next week and we could see drew lock if that is the case then yes sign me up for kansas city i think miami is going to get the nod though as my number one option for next week though going to uh, going up against the giants we always know that daniel jones is uh good for a couple turnovers most likely so and you look at Miami they were just left for dead in the middle of the season but now over the past four weeks they finished as the number three defense number two number 17 and then number one this past week so they are a a very very solid unit they're starting to get it together they are someone that I think you can roll out as a potential top 10 plate this next week up against the New York Giants Murph who is your ad at defense this week I've got one of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they have Detroit at Detroit. Um, similar to Yates' targeting of Daniel Jones, I like to target Jared Goff where possible. <laughs> Always uh, a good he, strategy. He's definitely good for a couple <laughs> Hasn't of times. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I feel bad to pick on the Lions, but hey, you know, I care about winning more than making friends with Lions fans. So, yeah, I'm going with the Vikings this year. All right. How week. about the streaming kicker for week uh, 13 here? Where are you going? 
Uh, Evan McPherson for me. Um, Evan McPherson is the kicker three on the week coming into mm. tonight's games. Uh, he, you know, we had he had that horrible game against Green Bay earlier in the season, um, where you know it, it was the stuff of nightmares. Um, I think a veteran kicker probably gets probably gets cut after the kind of performance he had, um, and he's come back and he's not missed a kick since. So it shows real determination from the rookie. You know, this guy was drafted as a kicker. He's got a heck of a leg. You know, I, I want to target uh, guys who can hit those 50, 60 yarders, and, and Evan McPherson can definitely do that if you haven't seen the video of him kicking the bottle uh, on top of the goalpost in, in the, the Florida I Gate. Oh, mm-hmm. Go check it out. Yeah, there's a bottle on top of the goalpost in, yep. at the Florida Indoor Facility, and he kicks the ball and knocks the bottle off. It's um, it's absolutely unbelievable. Um but yeah, I just think with the leg, uh, he's in a shootout game against the Chargers. Yeah, give, sign me up for that. He's going to put in a top five performance this week for sure. Yeah, it's about a kicker for you. I talked about him last week. It's Michael Badgley. Uh, Badgley has yet to finish outside the top 12 kickers in the last four weeks. Uh, so I think he is absolutely a solid option uh, that you can pivot to. Again, talked about him last week and he's continued to deliver. Same for me. Badgley again, two weeks in a row. All right, let's finish things up strong here with a little lightning round. And it comes to the keep or drop. I'm going to throw a name out. You do tell me whether you want to keep or drop them. Let's start with Rashad Bateman, rostered in 70% of leagues. A lot of people, a lot of people disenfranchised right now with Rashad Bateman. Yates, keep or drop? I'm keeping him. I agree. Murph, keep or drop? Yeah, all day long, okay. Good. I just wanted to get that one out of the way. Marquez Callaway, 51% rostered. Murph, keep or drop? Drop. Yates? I agree. You can drop him. Three for three. Khalil Herbert. I know you can never have enough running backs. I'm just throwing this out there. He's 38% rostered. Uh, Yates, keep or drop Khalil Herbert? He still comes with high, you know, a high-end insurance policy, so I think he's worth keeping if you, you know, have spot on your uh, have a spot on your bench. But otherwise, I think you can move on if there's a better high-end insurance policy available. Would you drop him for Jamal Williams? Oh, uh, that's close. That is actually very close. Uh, I think I because these are the questions point. we have to ask ourselves. So yeah, I know I you would drop him for Boston point. Scott. That's why I asked. Now, Murph, would you drop him for Boston Scott? See what I did there? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I'd, okay. I'd keep Herbert. I just <laughs> Montgomery doesn't look right. He still doesn't look right. He's not running well. Okay. Um, and again, I think you know he's a big part of our offense going forward. Could they flex in Herbert, knowing how well he's done? towards the end of the season. Yeah, I'll roll the dice. I'll keep Herbert. All right, Baker Mayfield, 36% rostered. If you still have him, I mean, I mean, I imagine that 36% <laughs> right now is super flex leagues where he's on the bench. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, the, he also has the highest paid backup in football on the bench right now in Keenum. I mean... They've doubled down that they're not making that quarterback change, but, um, yeah, it's not pretty. From a fantasy perspective, no, you gotta you got to just move on, even uh, in super flex leagues. Uh, how about you, Murph? Is you moving on yeah. super flex? Uh, I mean, unless there's literally no one on the waiver wire to pick up instead. <laughs> right. Well, if um, Zach Wilson was still out there now, would you de- uh, would you roll with Zach Wilson over? No. Uh, no. Taysom, if Taysom Hill is out there, I will definitely move right. on from Baker so for Taysom. Go. All right, yeah. last one here. Cedric Wilson, 18% rostered, but a very popular ad last week. Would you churn him and burn him here, Murph? I'd keep him another week. We still don't know uh, about the effects of COVID from cooper and uh, we don't know about lamb status so i'd keep him a week especially after what he put up um and if he didn't you know if he wasn't getting the snaps in the place next week then i cut him it's no harm in holding for a week all right yates how about cedric wilson for you yeah dan harris got this one right uh oh don't say that out loud picking don't, up cedric no, wilson and he was show. correct as much as it pains me uh <sighs> yeah I, I will hold on to him for one more week and then uh, then most likely move on. All right. We'll pretend that didn't happen here, especially <laughs> at the end. Uh, also, I want to thank our sponsors of today's show. That's magicspoon.com slash fantasy pros to go and get your magic spoon on healthy, good tasting cereal. It's good for you and it tastes good. I don't know what more you want. You get $5 off when you use that promo code fantasy, spoon, uh, fantasy pros, excuse me, at magicspoon.com. And don't forget also about my playbook where we've got the waiver assistant, but for free, you can use the cheat sheets over there to help you get all of your waiver wire ads done this week with your favorite uh, lineup advice from any of our experts here. And of course, don't forget about that promo giveaway we got going on, fantasybros.com slash contest. Thanks to our friends at Pristine Auction. That Chris Godwin jersey ain't going to give away itself, so make sure it goes to you. Subscribe to our Fantasy Pros YouTube channel at youtube.com slash fantasypros, and you can get in on that Chris Godwin jersey as well. And while you're at all of this, please... 
please follow our good friend Murph over on the Twitter machine at Murph underscore NFL. That's M-U-R-F underscore NFL and at Five Yard Rush as well. It's a great podcast. Murph, how's things going over there for the Rush Nation folks? I hope you guys are having a good season. Yeah, we're having a great season. Uh, certainly better than some of our fantasy teams, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, it's been great. The engagement here is is high. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some people next week. We're going to get together some of my uh, Buccaneers followers. Some of them I've not met. Uh, some of them I have. And uh, we're going to go watch a game together at 6 p.m. in a bar. Uh, so looking forward to that. And then I think you know we're going to try and do something for the Super Bowl. Uh, teamed up with our friends at the Warrior Bowl as well. So follow up information on that. But it's been a great season. The game's just growing from strength to strength here. Uh, we have a great audience here that's heavily engaged, and mm-hmm. it's just great to great to see football. It's definitely got through the you know made the last twenty one months uh, bearable, <laughs> and yeah, just join in join in the fun. We do so many leagues. I'm going to do some playoff leagues because I'm glutton for punishment and I can't just let this all end to zero. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing some playoff leagues and playoff contests and all sorts. So yeah, follow us. And if you don't want the fantasy season to end in week 17, then don't worry. We'll be able to fill that void for a few extra weeks. There you have it. That's what it's all about, right? Watching the games, hanging out and talking football with each other. That's why we do this in the first place. So uh, a little bit of a reminder of that. So if your teams aren't doing well, just remember, it is still fun. You know, you're part of this whole crazy group of people that just loves this game and loves the fantasy game that revolves around it. So enjoy it while you can. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and uh, good luck with all your waiver wire pickups. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Kyle Yates and Murph, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.